welcome you all. Um, just so that you know, what we're going to talk today is, is basically going to be on uh, technology innovation in the legal industry. Uh, so before I uh, we get started, I just want to uh, introduce our company in a nutshell, and then myself and my colleague Anuj uh, Saral. Um, so, Ina Zoom is a uh, immigration software company, you know, in a nutshell. So what we do is uh, we build software for the immigration law firms and also for the enterprises who deal with a lot of mobility needs for their, you know, uh, multinationals, for their global workforce. That's what we do. And um, we are one of the biggest players in the market. We pretty much are the leaders in the market uh, for this space. Um, we started out in uh, 1998, 99, and then, uh, it's, you know, since then we've grown. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. So we pretty much are the pioneers in that space. We, we created that marketplace, to be honest, uh, the whole cloud-based software for the immigration tech space, you know, back that time. And uh, to, uh, about myself, uh, I'm Vishwas Mudgal, and uh, I'm the vice president for products and marketing. So I head the, the products division, uh, look after the you know the new products that needs to be launched in the legal and in the immigration sector, right? And I've been an entrepreneur, and I've been into startups uh, for the last 10 years, in and out. And I basically joined the company, uh, and I assume because it's very exciting, uh, coming up with new products for the immigration and legal industry. So that's when I joined a couple of months back. Uh, Anuj, if you can introduce yourself. Anuj, Anuj Sareen. Uh, I've been in this industry for about 13 years now. Uh, mainly in the areas of immigration and uh, compliance. So I joined INS Zoom about uh, just under three years ago, and before that I was with Wipro and uh, Infosys, heading the immigration. <laughs> that, you know, the workforce is completely globally mobile, and both the organizations are compliant to the laws of the land in which they operate. All right. Great. So I think uh, we'll... Uh We look at the agenda right now, right? So we basically we're going to talk about you know why technology is uh, important for the legal industry in a nutshell, and you know we will we'll talk about what are the drivers, you know, that are pushing technology into the legal space, right? Then we look at you know a few of the latest trends and innovations that we are seeing uh, right now in the the legal uh, sector, and what is the what is upcoming, right, in the whole market uh, space. And of course, uh, uh, you know, we're going to talk about what, what INSU did to revolutionize our space, right? If you look at legal industry, although we might think that it's a very niche industry, but there's a lot of specialties there, you know, immigration and then you got criminal and you, you've got uh, um, litigation. litigation and you know, a lot of other things. So because this, I just wanted to be like a, an open forum. So if there's any questions, uh, if you want to contribute anything, uh, please, you can jump in and talk. And Anuj will be Anuj is an expert in, in the field, uh, so he'll be jumping in uh, anytime he wants to contribute something. We just want it to be like an open session, right? Okay. So when you look at it, uh, uh, what is uh, you know what really happened in legal industry, right? If you look, really look at legal industry and technology in legal industry, you always think that okay, you know it's been so such a slow adopter of technology, right? You know, lawyers typically the way they deal with is a lot of paperwork. Uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're like always, you know, kind of nerdy and really look at it, and they're afraid of technology, right? Pretty much, if you look at, you know, just go to some, you know, a court in Bangalore or talk to a lawyer in Bangalore, you get to know they're like pretty much clueless even today coming to technology. But I think really what's happened in North American market is a little bit encouraging. Uh, and then uh, the last five years, I think a lot of uh, things have changed for the legal industry. So just to give you an example of what it is, um, here are some of the statistics that you know, uh, ABA, the American Bar Association, has done the survey uh, last year, and this is what they got, right? So if you look at the lawyers, you know, in 2008 they were like 15% of the you know total you know um, lawyer population. Look at it, they were on the social network. Now, they look at a remarkable jump at 78%. And one of the reasons for it is also an adoption of smartphones, 
you have smartphones you know getting into all you know uh, the whole legal space you know if you really look at it the lawyers the paralegals um, uh, the companies embracing it so that has pushed people to you know pretty much adopt a lot of these technologies and one of the things that made software affordable in legal industry is the adoption of cloud right so that is what um, has this is what shows us uh, and how legal industry has been you know embracing changed uh, you know when it comes to technology you want to add anything no right so uh, to, okay so what are the biggest drivers you know why why is legal industry looking at uh, embracing technology so let's look at some of the aspects uh, and then we'll discuss about them uh, you know and then we can also have a discussion uh, on what do you guys also think about it right right so documents the crux of the legal industry is documents everything starts from a document right i mean be it like a, a property document or if it is an fir if it's a visa okay so whatever you do in legal industry it starts with a document so and when it, when everything you are dealing with the document okay so what really happens is innovation ha can be kick started at that level so you try to try to make it like you know office which is free of uh, you know papers and that's when it it kind of triggers technology in that direction collaboration uh, working together on any documents documents moving from one uh, table to another one department to another all this has been converted to technology right now it's become a paperless office so that is what is a crux of uh, uh, the legal industry right uh, adding to that uh, a lot of times this documentation is more driven by the compliance requirements or the ways the government act and behave for them they need to see that piece of paper otherwise it's like we don't really have anything at hand that is again slowly changing and you know you'll be seeing it again uh, uh, referenced a little later down in the presentation where the paradigm shift in the government is also happening where they are saying you know what let's save paper let's not chop down trees let's look at going in a direction where we can do a lot of this electronic absolutely what next is automation right if you really look at it uh, what we discussing right now paperwork and all these things right they are all mundane things and they are all you know regulations and compliance which you know somebody has set those rules and then you practically want everybody to follow them right so all this can can be automated right and that saves a lot of time that is and then make it make ourselves very productive and then if it is a bunch of paperwork that we need to do we need to be very reliable we need to be uh, able to produce the same uh, kind of results because it's just the same paperwork so we want to make it more reliable and also as uh, sorry scalable scalable reliability and scalable scalable thing and repeatability is something which anuj had already also told me that in um, automation is, is is very important there right so automation is something that is driving lawyers to adopt technology right that's what it, it's all about compliance you want to talk about compliance compliance again something which is not really in our control or in our hand it gets dictated by different government agencies and not just by different government agencies you put a new person on the chair over there the person comes up with his or her own interpretation of the law the way law is worded today worldwide there is always room for that ambiguity in it so this is a very dynamic environment it may have nothing to do with something happening in the parliaments of some other countries but boils down even to the point where a person sitting on that chair changes and his interpretation changes it also boils down to the economic scenario we have seen what past practices what policies what procedures have been followed by the government agency for decades the moment you have a recession the government says you know what but oh, that's not the interpretation of the law this is how we intended it to be and that's a lot of protectionism that you see happening currently today also given the economic scenario that the world is facing so again this is ruled by somebody else government people in chair 
and it changes at the snap of a finger. Nowhere in the world you will see that laws don't change on a daily basis and for the legal industry, keeping track of that change, keeping sure that you know and more for, so for products or for attorneys, more so for them, ensuring that you know they are translating that appropriately to the cases or to the transactions that they are dealing with. Absolutely. I think technology uh, when it comes to uh, compliance, as you said, is a very scary word for lawyers everywhere in any uh, sector you look at in illegal. And that's why technology is kind of, kind of coming to the aid, as Anuj has uh, just told. And uh, what are the next biggest driver is uh, mobile, right? So what uh, today we have seen, uh, you saw, you know, BYOD, uh, if you look at that, uh, bring your own device, or it could be accessing it anywhere. So legal sector has really become very different right now. So lawyers are pretty much going everywhere. If say, for example, they go to a, for example, the jail, they would take a tablet and go, and then they are not making notes in there, you know, on the paper, and they're coming back and feeding it in the system. They would just take a tablet, and then probably they'll just record it, which just converts into a text and feeds into your database, or you just enter it right there, Sorry. right? Is, is, is a tablet still around in some jail or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the whole point, what I'm trying to make, uh, you want to answer that question? Sure. Uh, I'm not going to say you're right, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Okay, and the reason why I say that is it depends upon the country that you are in. Yes, if you look at the Indian system, probably, you know, they take away all electronic devices from you before they allow you to meet your client. But you go to the Western world today, okay, there are a lot of countries which allow certain kinds of electronic devices to be taken inside when you are meeting with your client over there. So, you are right, but again, it depends upon which country you are. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Again, this is just an example I am trying to give you. But uh, even today, I mean, um, even a paralegal or even a lawyer, when you, when you go and you talk to him right now, he's not going to, uh, typically in US, they are not going to write stuff. They just enter it in your system. Either it's going to be a case management system or, you know, they, they're going to have uh, an application uh, on your tablet, which pretty much feeds into your uh, thing. So the things are very advanced at this point in time. So that innovation there is being uh, pushed by the mobile devices, right? So, uh, that has, is making lawyers to adopt those technologies. Just uh, for people who have just walked in, we are talking about what is driving technology in the legal sector and why lawyers are, you know, and then uh, phones across the world are investing in technology in the legal sector. These are some of the drivers that we are talking about right now. Again, this is the biggest factor, one of the biggest factor I must say at this point in time because the business has become global right now. And also the workforce has become global. There are two different things right now. So there is a firm sitting in uh, in uh, US at this point in time and they have a client in India, right? Well, the way business is to be done previously was, you know, you go to a lawyer and you pretty much pay them per hour and you, you get things done. It was very, very local. But now things have become very global. And then why is technology important there? Because you need an interface with your customers. So you need to have like a website and then you need to have like a case tracking system where you can, you can collect their documents and also if you really look at it you need to have a way to um, collaborate with your client answer the you know, questions everything is being done by technology right now and the most important thing is money so you want to be able to take money wherever you are so e-billing and you know all those uh, the billing systems that lawyers are now adopting right so that is something which is uh, more important from a global uh, workforce perspective um, again, uh, you want to take that global workforce? Sure. Uh, now, let's take a look at global workforce. What we all probably know is the software engineer, you know, out of college waiting to get his H1 or, uh, you know, a work permit to some other country and travel over there. Why? Why has that change happened? That change has happened because the economy today is not going to be driven by manufacturing growth of economies today are going to be coming from the services industry, from the service sector. Now, how do you service your clients or how do you help your clients 
in the service sector if you cannot be mobile. Okay, so that's what is another big driver which is happening today in the economy. As they say, you know, the world keeps on shrinking. And how is that happening? Is by making people mobile. Not just about making people mobile, you look at businesses. Let's go back uh, maybe about 10 odd years ago when the BPO industry in India was just in its nascent stages. What was the kind of business that we were looking at? What was the kind of input that was coming in to the country? You had, hi, this is John, how can I help you? But today, let's look at it. What percentage of the BPO business comes from, let me use the word, call centers? It's drastically dropping. Yes, it may account for a significant portion of the business revenue of the BPO sector. But if you see year over year, it's dropping. And what is the work coming in place of that is higher value added services. Let's take a look at the legal industry in which you know we are. Document discovery, research, okay, preparing of petitions, preparing of court cases. Today, all that happens right here in India and not for just, you know, a lawyer in India, a global lawyer, be it anywhere in the world, the capabilities are coming. That's what services are about. That's what businesses are about. That's what businesses today are looking at seeing how they can create a 24 by 7 work environment at practically or at really low cost to ensure higher productivity for themselves and better service to their clients. Right. Okay. So let's look at another driver that uh, is, you know, convenience. It's the biggest driver if you look at from a perspective of uh, the law firms and uh, enterprises right now. Right. So what is it? Right. I want to be able to attract my customers online. So how do I do it? So right now a lot of this is being run by websites. So if you go on the website. And they're gonna, you know, put an ad on Google saying that okay, somebody types, you know, so, you know, um, a lawyer in uh, San Francisco. So, you know, that's where, uh, you know, the law firm is gonna get uh, sales from. So you look at it; it's nothing but technology that is driving even the sales for, um, you know, the lawyers. And even now they are coming up with their own apps. They are coming up with their own, you know, uh, interacting you know, on uh, social networks. They're, they're they're everywhere at this point in time. So they have. You know the techno the industry has embraced um, you know technologies for mark to market themselves to do the sales right. That's one thing. Number second, as as I already discussed, billing is an important thing, and then um, uh, they collect money online right now. Most of the services if you look at these days to cut the whole cost of delivery. Nobody even goes to a lawyer. You know, so for some of the you know routine things, you just call a lawyer, you get the things done over internet, and then you make a payment, right? So the interaction, the human interaction is reduced a bit for things which are routine, right? And support, customer support is so much easy, you know, like uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, systems like Zendesk, you know, to, to give the support, the tickets, uh, you have um, uh, chat support, it's nothing about technology, you can chat with a lawyer at this point in time. Uh, there are a lot of these, uh, the whole issue uh, of, you know, getting a customer, uh, servicing them, making the payment, and making them um, giving them support, right? And also, next you even remind them. Say, for example, visa is getting expired. You also remind them, saying, okay, you just go and you know renew it right now. So you it's even helping them build more and more sales. So lawyers are also embracing that the whole fact, right? So that's convenience that is driving them right now, right? And next is affordability. So ten years back, things were very 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 expensive. There were a number of these um, desktop um, standalone systems, you know, that these uh, people used to buy, and that they needs to buy a server that hosts all the data, and to maintain that, they used to buy and they used to hire a, a system admin guy, right? This is a whole whole lot of uh, expensive stuff that we're talking about. So when the cloud-based software started coming in, it's one of the one of the examples is I know Zoom, that our own company right now. We came in with uh, uh, you know a whole lot of 
new par paradigm shift at that point in time that was cloud based which drastically reduced the cost for a law firm to adopt it because you don't have to buy a server you don't need to have a technical know how of how you're going to run and operate it and number 3 is you don't have to do that whole messy patches and you know every time you go and you know every uh, upgrade that software you don't want to pay it again right this is software as a service that we're talking about but so adding to that you know it's not just about upgrading the uh, software over here as we were talking a little while ago compliance yeah things just change so you really don't need to make any significant change as far as your product is concerned or uh, you know you're not really adding any new feature it's just the government decided to change one single form and that's it that's correct yes that's correct and competition so another other thing is happened right now is there's a lot of competition in the legal industry uh, because it's it's, it's, a, it's a growing industry and then uh, that has pushed down the cost for buying this software and what are those software we'll just get to that in, in some time uh, we'll try and quickly cover the things another very important thing is uh, you know integration from uh, even a data perspective like we have a lot of these apps right now talking to each other like you have your uh, you know practice management system that is talking to your you know ERP and ERP is talking to your CRM and this whole thing is talking to your uh, you know HRMS or you know and then you have exposed your APIs to others and then somebody else is trying to build apps on, around it so even legal industry this is what is been driving uh, the growth uh, APIs have become a standard norms in industry and there are a lot of developers who are building generic apps um yeah, on ipads on you know it, it could be on the web apps and all that stuff so that is there's another thing that is driving so people are making money uh through all this mashable technologies that we're talking about and this is another thing uh, which is pretty interesting that is ethics uh, if you really look at it last year um, aba has just amended it um amended its own uh, model rules for lawyers and it it says that to keep they need to keep abreast of the changes in the law and its practice including the benefits and risk associated with a relevant technology in order to, in order to competently serve their clients so now we are they are practically you know putting a moral obligation on the lawyer saying that okay you have to explore whatever there is in technology to give the best of the service so they cannot actually uh, stay back you know they cannot say that okay we don't need technology right now okay so there's like a moral obligation just an interesting point so i thought i'll just bring it in here so this is some uh, uh you know intelligence uh, report survey uh, the, the survey that was done by alm so we thought i'll just uh, we'll just aba is american bar bar uh american legal not pretty sure but like we can send it out over to you right so invasion of smartphones and tablets has pretty much changed the you know the game if you really look at it right so although um, if you can look at it you know uh, they want to understand okay what are the biggest benefits that you know you realize from using the smartphone or a tablet this is done from a lawyer's perspective they have you know uh, done the survey from lawyers from in the united states right access to emails is, is practic practically the biggest driver for anybody pretty look at it right so efficient use of the time and they want they can you know work anywhere they want right and they have improved collaboration with the colleagues which is very important because uh, a law firm is you know just like how we work in like software teams you know they have their own teams there uh, look at it and um, ability to uh, solve the problems so variety of reasons out there and uh, everybody uses a smartphone when really you look at it all the tablets are just picking up but smartphone is something which it's really picking up there this is some other uh, uh, report uh, from the same one it talks about the productivity uh, uh, of the how are they getting productive you know what exactly they're trying to use all right i just keep this one just to try and uh, this one so let's get on to uh, the hottest trends that are there right now at this point in time uh, we just go through 
what is actually happening on the industry right now, right? E discovery. So, has anybody heard of e discovery here? <laughs> That's a good one. So, so no need of doing anything. It's one thing Facebook can be done, and they post it also. That's what happens, right? People uh, they even get drunk and they go and post it on Facebook, saying that you know I drove back home drunk, yeah. and they get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> That's another uh, advantage these days. That you know everything is being monitored. You know, even all the police agencies and uh, even yeah, in the and in and US. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Another funny instance is uh, this guy went to rob a house and kind of saw the computer switched on and Facebook over there. <laughs> yeah. Happily till the cops came and took him away. <laughs> and even if you uh, look at uh, the Bangalore traffic police, they are on Facebook and if you, if you go and you complain on Facebook, they're closing the tickets. I mean, they're really monitoring it and closing it. That's something we should look at. That's really commendable. Facebook, uh, they are not acting on their side. Because uh, already I logged some complaints. You did? Yeah, but, but they did not reply. You know. Oh, okay. Because some of my friends uh, you know, did that and then they took care of it immediately. Uh, not on the side. Talking about the Facebook. I'm talking about Facebook. You might have logged in the website, right? No, do, do it on Facebook. Uh, what I'm saying is they are not active on their site, but maybe they are active on the Facebook. Yeah, they are active on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, I mean, yeah. it's changing in India uh, too. If you see, uh, how many of you have been caught for a traffic offense in the last one, two years? Quite a few of you. <laughs> how many of you have seen the guy take out his Blackberry? Yeah. And do you know what he does with that? Just it's not just about the chalan for that. History. Particular, yes. He pulls out your history. He pulls out your history and he can tell you then and there, you know what, there are five more tickets which you have not paid for, what do you want to do? But yeah, they are getting more and more uh, uh, savvy, okay. It's still got a long way to go, but yes, uh, this industry, or let me call it legal and law enforcement, which typically, at least in India, uh, and you know, even to a great extent, uh, uh, abroad has been a laggard in terms of adopting technology. Today, you are seeing that paradigm shift happen, wherein they are relying more and more on technology to, you know, help them and aid their work as against what it was earlier. Even if you look at ROC, right, uh, registrar of companies in India, it's, com it's completely automated right now. Uh, everything and everything is done online, so you don't have to. Go go in person and you know file your you know your company documents right now. So everything is online and. But the timeline still remains the same. <laughs> it, it's a little messy, but it, you know. But at least you have to go to a CA. You have to go to a CA for a few of the things because they need to certify some of the things. But look at convenience; it's, it's still much better, right? And they're trying to cut a lot of these things. Say, for example, you want to change your office address from one place to another. Before it was like a little bit of a nightmare, but now it's just a matter of uploading these certificates online and then you get the confirmation, right? So, and it's 24 bar 7, so that means work can also go on during, you know, Sundays. So that's something which is amazing even in India, if you really look at it. So coming back to uh, uh, a few of the hottest things that are going on right now in legal, uh, e-discovery is one of the... If you look at it, I mean, this is one of the biggest drivers at this point in time. So e-discovery, practically, what it means is, you know, um, it's a process where, you know, when right now, if you look at it previously, we were only dealing with paper, right? Evidences, form of paper, and, you know, there were uh, forensics on, you know, different things which are materialistic, you know, which you can feel them and all that. But right now, all litigations are dealing with data in an electronic format. So that means... In, in if, for example, two firms are clashing, you know, f for some litigation on a particular thing, and then uh, say if it can, can be corporate espionage or whatever it is, right? So then, uh, for that litigation, then the, both the firms have to exchange information, through which they will determine, okay, whether it's, what is wrong or right. And then what happens is emails and certain documents provide some certain information that normal documents cannot give. They give precision information of from where it originated, from which IP, what is the timestamp. A lot of metadata that you know normal documents cannot give. 
and this is exactly why you know e discovery is becoming such a uh, you know a big important thing especially in the united states market and also europe um, what it, it practically means is that you know you in the pre litigation you you kind of exchange data between uh, each other the two consoles and they put it in something called a legal hold where you know you cannot destroy the data right and then some forensic is, is run on it and then you do a lot of analysis and, and all those things and then it can also go to the in the court of law as you know evidence for a lot of these things right um, so to to do this process in a, in a in the right way there are a lot of companies at this point in time that have come up and it's become a multi billion dollar industry itself e discovery itself is is like one of the biggest pieces in legal industry right now and it's set to grow because more and more litigations have been you know every litigation goes through a hell lot of uh, you know electronic data right that's how it is this is one of the trends right now second is just now we discussed about cloud computing uh, if you really look at it you know what exactly is uh, getting into the uh, cloud computing that is uh, law practice management you know managing your documents and collaboration the time and billing say for example now it's uh, a lawyer uh, usually bills uh, for his time right now and then uh, he wants to know how much how much is he working on a certain uh, certain piece of work he usually has a timer and he just clicks the timer and he works on it and when he's getting up from there he clicks the timer okay and it stops so that becomes billable right before he used to like make an estimation note it down and then enter it there and convert it to uh, his you know his billing rate and then print uh, uh, discuss with his client and then send them an invoice collect the money now you don't have to do anything click a button and click click the button off that's it rest everything is taken care of by the software right this is just an example of how everyday work of a lawyer is getting more productive by technology right then you're talking about uh, accounting the whole accounting uh, is taken care of um, uh, e discovery is again is written there the virtual lawyering we'll get to that a little bit later the backup and the storage right project management and the whole office suite that you have at this point in time so everything is on the cloud and it's accessible anywhere you, you like it uh, another thing that we already spoke about is mobile uh, in all this uh, stuff that is there right now is going mobile uh, we as a company i and zoom we are also trying to push uh, you know into mobile space at this point in time because that's where the future is and uh, if you look at it uh, that's going to be play it's going to be playing a major role in even the revenue for uh, the whole entire sector here right you know look at the mobile device becoming like your legal advisor the domain we are is in immigration but let's take a look at the mobile device kind of becoming your legal advisor irrespective of where in the world you're traveling look at the kind of scope and the opening it comes up with that small device in your hand you land in Czech Republic and it tells you you know right all right this is what you need to do complete this you've done that you let the system know you've done it it says okay fine you know what you're good to stay for the next 30 days or 90 days or you need to go ahead with another portion of the process so that's the kind of stuff the mobile devices are opening up to based upon you know location services that you can activate on it absolutely so and there is no end to what mobile so no end to yeah. no end to what you could look at though. right for example even news for example stay updated with the local uh, legal news immigration news um, and then the important announcements, you know, you get these pop-up alerts on your mobile, so much more convenient than how it was before, all right? So mobile is actually changing the game for us. And this is another interesting thing, right? Uh, you can even dial a judge. I mean, this is like, this is what is happening right now. So for routine cases where, you know, you don't have to you know, go and, you know, appear in front of a judge, you can just call or, you know, appear yourselves. Uh, through video and even the clients may not come so lawyer is sitting somewhere a client is sitting somewhere you just dial a judge and you get done with it so it saves a lot of money for everybody right so that's that's what uh, this is this right now I, I even remember even for Kasab and all I think uh, here it was a video the, video yeah you did a video conference so even in India you know they have embraced this technology already right it's just that you know it's far more prevalent overseas than it is in India 
In India, it's more on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, overseas, if you see, uh, I'm not going to say it's becoming the norm, but that's a direction in which they are trying to move towards. So I think, uh, I think it all depends upon measures. I think in India, the wishes, I think it can do that. Absolutely, which is why I'm saying it's more on a case-by-case -case basis in India today. I mean, Kasab they did for, you know, security uh, 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 reasons. That was the prime driver for them wanting to have it via a, a video conference. But overseas, as, you know, Vishwas was saying, smaller stuff, you know what, why don't we let's look at finishing it off then and there. So it's moving towards that trend of, you know, let me call it as a virtual and instantaneous quote that you may have. All right. Case management tool. So we're going to talk uh, about this a little more. Probably Anuj will cover that as a part of what I and Zoom, uh, what we offer. Uh, so basically, it, it tries and takes care of a lot of your case, a case or a matter that you call uh, in the legal industry. So it, it manages the entire workflow of a case. Right. So this is one of the hottest things right now in the industry. Security solutions. This, like what uh, we have mentioned here, is the cornerstone of legal technology. Wherever there is data, there is sensitive data, there are people trying to access it, trying to manipulate it. So that's when it becomes super, super critical to have security around it uh, in, in all the forms, right? Uh, so security systems, uh, security for legal industry is one of the hottest things right now. Uh, you know, people pay a lot of money to get their data secure. Sorry? How, how much are we, how much time we have? Five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes? We started a little, okay. So we'll just uh, cover it quickly right now. We don't have, uh, it's fine. So another thing is uh, social networks. Again, a lot of people are, um, you know, embracing it. I think we can take 10 minutes more, I think. That's fine. You can take more. All right. So uh, enterprise social network, again, is hot, even in the legal sector at this point in time. Um, Collaborative tools, you know, where you can work on documents and, you know, uh, the Excel sheets now, the way you're working on it. E-billing is, is, of course, uh, uh, as I told you, collecting money online. Uh, even in India right now, I think lawyers are doing it all the time, right? So that's how it is. Big data, okay. This is another um, word that is prominent right now, if you really look at it in the uh, legal industry, right? Five years ago, what really scared the industry at that point in time was the word cloud. At that point in time, so people didn't know what was cloud, and you know they were really, really finicky about uh, what really it meant, uh, how how secure the data is going to be, what they're supposed to do with it, and primarily that uh, fear came from not understanding what cloud meant. And the same thing is happening now with big data. So everybody's like, okay, what is big data, and how is it going to affect me, and all that. Uh, so big data is basically uh, means that uh, analysis that we do on a large amount of data and practically uh, every uh, case that right now look at it from an e-discovery point of view, there is a lot of electronic data and you have to scan the whole thing and you know come up with analysis on it. So big data is going to be, uh, has a big future in, in law, so it's, they call it big law at this point in time. They have many you know, words for the, to describe it. So that's what it covers. So we'll not get into too much detail as we're running out of time, but we can connect offline. Virtual law firms, a lot of law firms just do consulting online right now, so they don't need to have an office. It's so much more convenient. Uh, outsourcing is again, uh, you know, legal process outsourcing. Companies are sitting in US, but the work is getting done in India. Alternate delivery models, uh, you know, a very classic example for this is uh, uh, legal Zoom and the a couple of other websites even in India as well, where you don't have to go to a lawyer to get, uh, you know, to do s to the basic work, like, you know, filling up a, a company incorporation sheet or, you know, it could be uh, filing for a patent, you know, the some of the few things. Uh, you can just do it online yourself. You can just um, do the, you know, registration, trademark and all that, do it yourself. So these are alternate delivery models, which are cutting the cost. In India, I think everything is online uh, for the registration. No, but on your own? On your own. Some of the things you need a patent agent to register it. No, no, I don't I think, think trademark we can do. Exactly, you can go on the site and the form is there. You're going to Yeah. Things are changing. Things are really changing. So, we'll, um, um, all right. I so. Don't deal with them. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can 
Anuj will, I think, take us through what we have done uh, as a company. Thanks, Vishwas. Thanks. All right. Uh, you know, we've been talking about <coughs> all this uh, technology and embracing technology by uh, legal uh, firms. Our journey in this has been uh, pretty tough because, you know, as we were talking a little while ago, lawyers not so tech, uh, tech savvy, having reservations about, you know, storing data on somebody else's system, what is the database, cloud, what the hell does cloud mean, internet, or does that mean everybody can land up seeing whatever I have or not. So that was a big thing which we had to break into and that was when we managed to do that, did we really start seeing growth in this industry, in this business. And then after that, it was, you know, small, small things that as an organization which we did, which really helped catapult us to the position where we stand today. What is it that we do? We are there in a very niche segment. Immigration and legal compliance. Software products for immigration and legal compliance. I don't think any one of you would have probably ever heard of that in the past. But yes, that's where we are. And we have kind of been the pioneers in this business, starting out about 13 years ago by simply putting a product on the web. Everything else was desktop based. Our USP was, you know what, we are on the web. And we hit these barriers. We managed to overcome these barriers and over the years have tried to help and work along with our clients by doing very small, small stuff. If you see, you take a look at this, very small, small things. But yes, each of these small things, each of these changes that we did, okay, resulted in significant productivity improvement for our clients, resulted in significant increase in revenue for us as an organization, resulted in us being able to take out our competitors from this business space. We self-funded. But we took on people who had venture capital funding also. Starting from that point. And how we did it was just small, small stuff. Innovating. You know, look at it. Credit card processing. Today, we guys look at it as standard. Go to any website. He's going to ask you for your uh, credit card number. And you're done with it. We came up with that in 2004. Almost 10 years ago. And man the reaction from the customers, from our lawyers was, wow, are you saying that I can collect money online? And our answer was a simple yes. Innovation need not necessarily be very big. Small, small stuff can go towards making things a lot easier for everybody. Corporates came into the picture, immigration. How, how many of you have got an H1 or an L1? Uh, visa or work permit to some other country. Have any one of you applied, got? What was the experience? Was the transparency? Did you have information available to you? It was painful. It was painful. Was it a big black box? Totally. Totally. And that's the space which we addressed. And this is a simple integration workflow which we built for one of our clients. I'm not obviously going to name uh, the client at this point of time. However, it was a very simple integration and the kind of barriers we had to break. Corporate concerns on data privacy, on data security. Okay. She can talk about the, that a lot I, more. I can essentially file for two different people sitting somewhere else in the world because the law firm that was working on my paperwork sent me their details. So I have somebody else's offer letter and bank details and everything. So, and what now I did? fear somebody else in the world might have mine. <laughs> See? And those were things which we had to can overcome. I sue them? <laughs> oh, yeah, if they sell your data, you definitely can. No, but can I sue them for getting wrong information? You can sue anybody. Technically, you can sue anybody for anything for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> so that you know. <laughs> but, you know, what did we do? All we did was we had the lawyer system. We had the client systems and we had our system, INS Zoom. We built a three-way integration between all these three, encrypted it, okay, and made it depending upon what the information is, real-time or a batch job, 
okay, every two minutes to uh, 12 hours, certain jobs used to run to share information between all these three systems in a very secure manner. That's all we did for them. And today, their, their employees are really satisfied. They don't seem to have an experience like uh, uh, she had because with that integration, the moment you enter data, it's back available on the intranet of the organization. So we integrated between the intranet, the lawyer system, and the INS Zoom system, all three together to share real-time information. Next. How many of you can guess what these numbers are? Have any one of you read these numbers in the recent past? The number of Indians going to US uh, in the close. Yeah, Absolutely. These are the top H-1B filers yeah. in, uh, for the year 2012. Okay. Uh, again, uh, more than half of these are uh, our customers. How is it that they have been able to do this? Take a look at this list. How many Indian companies do you see here and how many foreign companies do you see here? Eight, eight are Indian. Right? Okay, that's the embracing of technology and why we've probably been significantly ahead of the others is because the sector or the, the, if I look at technology, we are more in the service sector, okay, where we have this need for sending resources overseas, okay. How have they been able to do this? We spoke about a little while ago, repeatability, scalability, etc., etc., you look at this, let's say cognizant, 9,281 H-1B applications for the fiscal year. How do you think they would have managed it? And trust me, uh, it's not an easy job doing an H-1B for any person. The amount of back and forth which can happen on that, the amount of information which you'll need to be processed and put into that application can be humongous. We remember Obama saying that, you know, the First presidential speech, we won't allow a lot of people to come to the US. We want all the jobs to be sourced locally. True, true. But That's how come still they are able to send 9,000 people? They've not sent. They've got, uh, they've applied for, uh, or they filed 9,000 H-1B uh, applications. Okay. But yes, ultimately, I guess all of them would definitely travel. But look at it. It's a question of demand supply. Yes, you want to create local uh, job opportunities. You're going to take actions towards creating those job opportunities. But again, how many job opportunities are you creating on one side? How many people are there in your country to be able to take on that job responsibility? That gap still is very high. Right? So as long as that gap exists, okay, as long as that gap exists, okay, you are going to have H1Bs. And the economic uh, viability. Economic viability. Multiple, multiple fac uh, factors which would go into the picture. But how these guys have been able to do this and scale up their operations is simply by embracing technology. Simply by going in for automation of that whole process. Making it scalable and repeatable. And we could talk a lot more, but I guess, uh, uh, you know, we have the people for the next session waiting. So we're going to be outside in case you guys want to, uh, uh, you know, have a chat. Thank you so Great. much. Uh, Thanks, everyone. It was really good. Thank you so much. We are available at, uh, you know, inazoom.com. Uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, we are also hiring a lot of people for products, uh, for marketing, sales, uh, and uh, software. And we have, we have got a bunch of very talented engineers and product managers here. So we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, anybody, just please uh, get in touch with us or shoot an email to, you know, anazoom.com, right? Thank you so much.